and welcome to In-Depth. I'm Tina Jha. In some good news for the Indian financial sector, non-performing assets reported by banks are showing a decline after rising constantly for seven years. An RBI report on the trend and progress of the banking sector shows that gross non-performing loans of banks improved to 9.1% by the close of September this year, compared to 11.2% in the financial year 2018. Net non-performing assets, that is the NPAs of all commercial banks, reduced to 3.7% in the financial year 2019 as against 6% in the financial year 2018. Further reflecting the improvement in the health of the banking system, net NPAs nearly halved to 3.7% this year from 6% in the year 2018. While cases referred for recovery through legal mechanisms shot up, Cleaning up of balance sheets through sale of bad loans to asset reconstruction companies decelerated annually and declined as a proportion of GNPAs in the beginning of 2019. As per the report, this was largely due to the conducive policy environment and also the insolvency and bankruptcy code. In this edition of In-Depth, we analyze the RBI annual report on trends and progress of the banking in 2018-19 the factors that led to the decline in NPAs and the challenges that still remain. So there's good news for the banking sector on the bad loans front. The latest report by the Reserve Bank of India shows a reverse trend in the NPAs after rising constantly for seven years. The report says that the gross NPAs of all banks declined to 9.1% in the financial year 2018-19 from 11.2% in the financial year 2017-18. Good news for the banking sector, and this one has taken quite some time in coming. After seven long years, the gross non-performing asset ratio of all banks has declined to 9.1% in the financial year 2019, as compared to 11.2% in the financial year 2018. As the bad loan recognition process nears completion, this is a major indicator of the improving health of the banking system. According to the RBI's annual report on trends and progress of banking in the year 2018-19, Gross non-performing loan ratio remained stable at 9.1% in the September quarter of the current fiscal. Net non-performing assets of all commercial banks almost halved to 3.7% in the financial year 2019 as against 6% in the financial year 2018. Gross NPAs of public sector banks improved to 11.6% in the financial year 2019 from 14.6% in 2018. Net NPAs of public sector banks came down to 4.8% from 8% in the last financial year. During the same period, private sector banks' gross NPA reduced to 5.3% from 4.7%. Net NPAs of private sector banks stood at 2% compared to 2.4% last year, primarily driven by the massive NPA pile at IDBI Bank, which was reclassified as a private sector lender effective from 21st January 2019. After quite some time, we are getting to hear some good news from the Indian banking sector. And the fact that it is coming at a uh, mass level, in the sense it concerns the entire banking sector's health, not just one or two banks, means that there is some big reason for us to feel that, yes, there is traction happening in the banking sector. Substantially, you know, what's happening is that uh, what's what what the what the numbers show is that the rate of growth of NPA is now slower than the rate of resolution, and the rate of resolution the reason why it has speeded up, and in fact it will speed up even more because this is about 2018-19. So we are uh, on the few months, and we would see the results for 19-20 also is because of the institution of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. The RBI said the improvement in asset quality was driven by state-run lenders, which saw a drop both in GNPA and in the net NPA ratios. The report says the decline in the slippage ratio as well as a reduction in outstanding gross NPAs 
helped in improving the gross NP ratio. The RBI report adds that the decline is due to conducive policy environment and the insolvency and bankruptcy code. The report also said the proportion of standard assets in total advances of commercial banks increased in financial year 2019. During this period, recovery of stressed assets improved owing to resolution under the insolvency and bankruptcy code. Recovery under the IBC process contributed to more than half of the total amount recovered. The report said cases referred for recovery under various mechanisms grew over 27% in volume and tripled in the value during the year. The banks also recorded a synchronized decline in all special mention accounts, restructured standard advances and gross NPAs. Special mention accounts are accounts with the potential to become an NPA or stressed asset. However, gross NPA in agriculture sector increased in the financial year 2019 as well as in the first half of financial year 2020. Gross NPAs in the industrial sector too stood high at 17.4%. With inputs from Kunal Singh, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for a short break on the program, but when we return, we'll explain to you what NPA actually is and what are the factors that lead to, it, to their increase. Do stay with us. An asset, including a leased asset, becomes non-performing when it ceases to generate income for the bank. In recent years, non-performing assets had been the single largest cause of worry for the banking sector in India. The 1991 Narsimhan Committee report highlighted that priority sector lending was leading to the build-up of NPAs of the banks and recommended a proper system to identify, classify and then phase out the NPAs. In our next report, let's take a look at the reasons behind increase in NPAs and the government efforts to tackle them. A non-performing asset is a loan or advance for which the principal or interest payment remains overdue for more than 90 days. Banks are required to classify NPAs further into four broad categories. Substandard assets are assets that have remained NPAs for periods less than or equal to 12 months. Doubtful assets are those that remain in the substandard category for more than 12 months. According to the RBI, loss asset is considered uncollectible and of such little value that its continuance as a bankable asset is not warranted, although there may be some salvage or recovery value. As opposed to NPA, standard assets are those that have remained non-performing for 12 months or less than 12 months and the risk of the asset is normal. Although the most common NPAs are the term loans, there are other forms of non-performing assets as well, including overdraft and cash credit accounts that are left out of order for more than 90 days. Agricultural advances whose interest or principal installment payments remain overdue for crop or harvest seasons. And if expected payment on any other type of account is overdue for more than 90 days. NPAs place the financial burden on the lender a significant number of NPAs over a period of time may indicate to regulators that the financial health of the bank is in jeopardy. Not just this, depositors get lower returns on their investments and may also lose any uninsured deposits. Borrowers have to pay a higher rate of interest on the loans to compensate bad loans. However, lenders generally have four options to recover their losses, including taking possession of any collateral and sell it to cover losses. Banks can restructure loans to maintain cash flow and avoid classifying the loan as non-performing altogether. Lenders can convert bad loans into equity, which may appreciate to the point of full recovery of principal lost in the defaulted loan. Banks also have the option of selling off the loan at a significant discount to a collection agency. India's bad loans are fifth highest in the world. In 2011, the country's bad loans were only 2.36% which kept surging until March 2015, when it rose dramatically. The reason behind this surge, which attributed to the RBI, which tightened norms for NPA recognition in 2015, after which banks had to recognize some assets as NPA, which otherwise were considered standard assets. A lot of the loans currently classified as NPAs originated in the mid-2000s, 
at a time when the economy was booming and business outlook was very positive. Large corporations were granted loans for projects based on the recent growth and performance. But as economic growth stagnated following the global financial crisis of 2008, the repayment capability of these corporations decreased. The measures taken to resolve and prevent NPAs can broadly be classified into two kinds. First, regulatory means of resolving NPAs as per various laws like the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code brought by the NDA government in 2016. And the Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act 2002 that promotes setting up of asset reconstruction companies to deal with NPA. RBI has also prescribed remedial measures for banks for internal restructuring of stressed assets. These include introduction of certain schemes such as strategic debt restructuring which allowed banks to change the management of the defaulting company and joint lenders forum where lenders evolved a resolution plan and voted on its implementation. The bankruptcy and insolvency law was a very good law because for the first time in India's history we actually started telling promoters who couldn't uh, you know, repay their loans that if you don't repay your loans, you will lose your company. So this has never happened. In 70 years of Indian history, Indian corporate history, this is the first time a, a lender is being told, a borrower is being told that if you don't repay your loan, uh, we will take your company over. So this is an extremely important step. There is no two ways about it. According to the Reserve Bank of India, gross non-performing assets in Indian banks, specifically in public sector banks, are valued at around 400,000 crore rupees. That represent 90% of the total NPAs in the country, with private sector banks accounting for the remainder. However, in a written reply to the Rajya Sabha this year, the government informed that the gross NPAs of public sector banks have declined by 89,189 crore rupees from a peak of more than 8.95 lakh crore rupees in March 2018 to over 8.06 lakh crore rupees in March this year. With inputs from Kunal Singh, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In recent years, various steps have been taken to expedite and enable resolution of NPAs of banks. Some of them include the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, as we just told you, the Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act, and also Stressed Asset Management Verticals. In addition, some reforms have also been implemented in the banking system, particularly the public sector banks, to resolve the NPA crisis. In our next report, we look at some of these comprehensive steps undertaken by the government in recent years. Bad loans of public sector banks declined by 89,189 crore rupees to 8.06 lakh crore in the financial year 2018-19. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman informed the Lok Sabha in July this year that the decline in NPAs was a result of the government's 4 R strategy that of recognition, resolution, recapitalization and reforms. As per the Finance Minister's reply, GNPAs of public sector banks jumped over twofold to 8.95 lakh crore rupees in the financial year 2018 from 2.7 lakh crore rupees in the financial year 2015, according to RBI data, mainly on account of the recognition of stressed assets as a bad loan by the central bank. As per RBI provisional data on global operations, gross NPAs of scheduled commercial banks stood at 9.49 lakh crore rupees during the financial year 2019. In India, resol resolving bankruptcies, uh, bad debts was very difficult. So the very fact that companies are being forced to sell out, there's a mechanism for that. And the fact that there are buyers coming in and there's an independent uh, set of arbitrators who are able to do the negotiation. The biggest example of this is the sale of SR Steel for rupees 42,000 crore to ArcelorMittal. And you know, these are very substantial numbers which actually create traction for the banking sector. Under the 4 R strategy to reduce NPAs of public sector banks, comprehensive steps have been taken in recent years. Like, change in credit culture has been effected, with the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code fundamentally changing the creditor-borrower relationship, taking away control of the defaulting company from promoters or owners, and debarring willful defaulters from the resolution process, 
as well as debarring them from raising funds from the market. The public sector banks have been recapitalized to the extent of 3.12 lakh crore rupees over the last four financial years, with infusion of 2.46 lakh crore rupees by the government and mobilization of more than 0.66 lakh crore rupees by the public sector banks themselves, enabling them to pursue timely resolution of the NPAs. The government has also issued a framework to the public sector banks for timely detection, reporting and investigation relating to large value bank frauds and for systemic and comprehensive checking of legacy stock of their non-performing assets. Some of these include board approved loan policies of the public sector banks now mandate tying up necessary clearances or approvals and linkages before disbursement, scrutiny of group balance sheet and ring fencing of cash flows, non-fund and tail risk appraisal in project financing. Use of third-party data sources for comprehensive due diligence across data sources has been instituted, thus mitigating risk on account of misrepresentation and fraud. Monitoring has been strictly segregated from sanctioning roles in high-value loans and specialized monitoring agencies combining financial and domain knowledge have been deployed for effective monitoring of loans above 250 crore rupees. Also, to ensure timely and better realization in one-time settlements, online end-to-end -end OTS platforms have also been set up. All the sectors need careful attention of the government, A, in terms of policies to ensure that there is growth revival, B, there is a way to ensure that the sectors do not get into problems again. So that is very important. Now, one of the ways to do that is to ensure that the centre continues to follow a very stable fiscal policy. Monetary policy tends to be stable, but fiscal policy should be stable. There should be no outlandish uh, offers given to somebody. The policies should be carefully constructed and continued for a long time. So, policy stability. The government is working on some of these to ensure that you know there is no, not too much a fluctuation of policies, but that should continue. Uh, these will ensure that the uh, environment remains conducive for the overall level of banking uh, NPAs to come down. Additionally, Fugitive Economic Offenders Act 2018 has been enacted for effective action against willful defaulters fleeing Indian jurisdiction. In this act, the property of fugitive offenders will be confiscated and the offender will be disentitled from defending any civil claim. To discourage economic offences, the government has advised public sector banks to decide on publishing photographs of willful defaulters, to obtain certified copy of the passport of the promoters and directors and other authorised signatories of companies availing loan facilities of more than 50 crore rupees. Heads of public sector banks have also been empowered to request for issue of lookout circulars. Nine of the 12 large NP accounts that accounted for 3.45 lakh crore rupees of outstanding claims in the year 2017 have also seen a closure. Seven of them have been resolved, two have gone into liquidation process, while three are still looking for some kind of closure. With inputs from Kunal Singh, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. That's it from us today in depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a comprehensive view on some other subject. In case you miss the television broadcast of our program, you can also watch it online on YouTube and Twitter. And you can also leave behind your feedback and suggestions about our program. Thank you for your time.